This is the new Ford Puma, and it's basically a Ford Fiesta underneath the skin, but they've jacked it up a little bit so that it's an alternative to a Nissan Juke or Volkswagen T-Roc. And I'm going to review it. Let's talk about the design of this Puma. It's supposed to be an SUV, but it's more like slightly swollen hatchback. Doesn't seem like an off-roader at all, does it? Also, Ford have tried to make it look sporty, and if you get ST-line versions, you can get them with a large rear spoiler. I do like the design of the back, though. It looks good, and the way they've written Puma across the back. It's like they're very proud of what it is. As you move down the side, you can see it's definitely not like an SUV at all. You've got a sloping roof line, and it looks super sporty. The wheel arches can be body coloured, or they can be black, depending on which model you go for. At the front here, Ford has created something, what they call a floating A-pillar. Looks like this part of the windscreen surround isn't joined to the car. It just looks like they ran out of metal and they had to fit some plastic. I'm not buying into that. One design feature I do like though is this. When you come around to the front, the headlights aren't down there like they'd normally be on most cars. They're actually quite high up on the bonnet. Apparently they've been inspired by the headlights on the Ford GT supercar. Then you've got this very distinctive grill. This car has a smiley face. It's good for a car to have a smiley face. And the look of the grill and the bumpers, once again, depends on which model you go for. Overall, I like the look though, especially in this color. The new Puma range kicks off from just over 20,500 pounds, but let's see how much you can save on average on one through CarWow. Oh look, you can save almost two grand on one. So if you wanna see how much you can save on a new car, such as the Puma or any car for that matter, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow to check out the best deals from our trusted dealers. The engine choices on the Puma for the moment are very, very simple. So they're all one litre three cylinder turbo petrols. There's a 95 horsepower version, 125 horsepower version, a 125 horsepower version with mild hybrid technology for a bit better economy, and a 155 horsepower version also with mild hybrid technology. They are all manuals and the car is front wheel drive. There will be diesels available later and you'll be able to get those with an automatic gearbox. This car that I'm saying right now has the 155 horsepower engine. It's supposed to be good for 0 to 60 in nine seconds, but I want to see for myself, so I've got my specialist timing gear here. I'm going to launch it. Let's do it. Oh, come on. Come on, little Fiesta. It's not Fiesta, it's a Puma. Well, it is a Fiesta, isn't it, really? And that's a 60. The Ford Puma did 0 to 60 in 9.1 seconds. Yeah, that's close enough. Here on the inside, the Puma feels all right. If you've sat in a Fiesta, it's going to be rather familiar. It's not the most exciting, but it does its job. Everything's laid out quite neatly. You've got this screen here, which is not too low down, so it's easy to see, though it does seem a little bit tacked on. Quality on the dash, that's fine, that's soft touch. It's got leatherette, this particular model. It's nice, but then you've got scratchy here and scratchy down there and a bit of wobblage down here as well. It's all right though, it's kind of what you expect at this price point. One thing that gets me about Ford's though, the steering wheels just feel a little bit big for my liking, but maybe that's a personal thing. Overall, it's all right. It's just not as flamboyant as something such as a Nissan Juke. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner, just up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Here in the back, it's only just about okay. If I sit up straight, my head is touching the roof, but I think it's made worse on this particular model because we've got the optional panoramic roof. If you want to carry adults in the back, don't have that fitted. Kids will be fine though. If you need to carry three people in the back at once, no one will be fine. It's really uncomfortable with three adults. Three kids, maybe if they're small, but they won't want to go fast. It's not the most practical of these small SUVs. If you want something that is spacious in the back, that's similar money, similar kind of concept, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my full in-depth video review of the Skoda Kamik. It's way bigger. The Puma is more practical when it comes to the boot. So the total capacity is 456 litres, which is one litre more than the boot capacity of the Volkswagen T-Cross. Haha, <laughs> take that, Volkswagen. Really useful leader as well, that one. Also, it's a very practical boot. It's nice and square. There is a bit of a load lip, but look, you can easily slide heavier things out like that. Hey, if you'd like to send us some suitcases, I know you work for a travel suitcase um, accessory sort of company and you'd like them to feature in our video, send them in because these are getting damaged because I keep... So you've got lots of useful functionality as well, such as 12 volt sockets, some hawks, and some tie down points as well there. 
My favorite bit is this, the load cover. So when you shut the boot, it doesn't get in the way. It just folds in neatly and keeps your items covered away from prying eyes. And it's super easy to remove. Look, I can do this, then I just detach this bit. It's really nicely engineered. And it's super light. I could throw it, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to store it underneath here, out the way. Lovely jubbly. Oh, and this car's got an electric tailgate. How very SUV-like. It's the only thing that is on this car, really. The rear seats in the Puma split 60, 40, and it's not completely flat, but it's continuous, so it's easy to slide bigger items to the front. It is a bit annoying that this happens, though, when you fold the seats down, this flops in there, and so when you put it back, if you're not careful, your seat belt's trapped, and then you have to do all this kind of shenanigans, which is annoying when you're a very busy man like I am. What's also annoying is that with the seats folded, yes, you can fit quite a lot into it, but it's not as much as you can in some of this car's rivals. If you want to see just how much you can fit in this car's boot, well, it's this much. It's pretty decent. Right then, let's talk about the standard equipment you get with this car. The range kicks off with the titanium model, and that has climate control. You've got wireless charging for your mobile phone. There's also an 8-inch touchscreen with built-in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and there's rear parking sensors. Next up is the ST line model, and it gets some sporty additions such as an aluminium gear knob, some red stitching here and on the steering wheel, and a digital driver's display. The ST line also gets some upgraded wheels with some snazzy black inserts. Lovely. Finally, there's the top of the range ST line X model, which gets some hard leather sport seats, which are rather comfy. Some carbon effect trim here on the dash. Not so sure about that, but I'm sure about the Bang & Olufsen stereo. You can get this car with an optional driver's assistance pack. It includes a rear view camera, an auto part facility, and plenty of kit to stop you crashing into stuff. For instance, there's something called evasive steering, where the car will actually steer itself to help guide you around an object so you don't smash into it. And I'll illustrate now how that works with a very dramatic reconstruction. <laughs> Now, which model of Puma can you afford? Well, when making a decision, just looking at the list price isn't ideal, is it? Because often you get a discount from a dealer, and to find out what is a fair discount, you want to use the CarWow configurator. So, I'm going to plug the details of this car in. It's the one liter eco boat with 155 horsepower, ST Line X, and the list price is 23,625, but, I've got an offer back from a CarWow dealer for just under £22,000, so saving around £1,800. Hmm, that's better. I've actually picked my favourite engine and trim combination of the Puma, and I've got some offers back on that model, some really fair prices. So if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can check those out. You can also follow the link below the video. It says Matt's favourite pick. Okay, let's talk about this infotainment system. It's actually really pretty good. So the screen's nice and bright. The graphics are sharp. It's easy to navigate as well. And it's responsive. It all moves around quite easily. Obviously, the satellite navigation, you can input things just using the touchscreen, or you can do it using the voice commands. Take me to McDonald's. It even understands stuff like that. Please say a line number or say none of those. See? Now, I could go to McDonald's, but I don't want it. I don't like it. It gives me indigestion. The digital driver's display is really nice and clear, and you can change the view of it by using buttons on the steering wheel. I'm going to go for calm. I bet it just shows bugger all. Yeah, it shows bugger all. <laughs> Great. The Puma comes with Ford's Pass Connect, so that includes live updates of the satellite navigation system and a data connection to the internet, which you can then tether your phone off. Now, it's free for the first two years of the car's life, but after that, you do have to pay 100 quid for it a year. The system also includes a free app, so you can do things like lock and unlock the car remotely if you need to let someone into it. I actually don't have it on my phone to download. I was unlocking the car using the key. I just couldn't be asked to, you know, you have to sign all disclaimers and input data and couldn't be asked. Connectivity in this car isn't exactly brilliant. You've got one USB there and another one under here. And there is a 12 volt socket here as well if you want to charge something old fashioned. 
Interior storage spaces in this period are pretty good. You've got three cup holders here. There's the little one for your energy drink. It's all fine there. There's obviously the place for your mobile phone there. Underneath here, there's an annoying storage tray, but the actual center is deep enough. The glove box, oh, just lent on the horn, is a reasonable size. I think we'll keep those for our team. I always take them <laughs> cards. As for the door bins, they are rather shallow, but they're big. You can fit a big bottle here in the front. In the back, they're also a decent size, got an all right size bottle, and then there's storage on the seat backs. And then there's another place where, ah, that's where I left them. You can lose things. When it comes to fitting a child seat into the Puma, it's actually very easy. The Icefix anchor points may not have like a flap to make them easy to get at, but you just jab the seat in and it'll fit. Also, it's easy to fit it to the door, it's wide enough, and there's enough space back here that even a really bulky rear-facing seat will fit without having to push one of the front seats forward. Underneath its skin, the Ford Puma is basically a Fiesta. All the mechanicals are pretty much the same. They've just pumped up the bodywork. As a result, it's about that much longer and that much taller. So according to Ford, that much is all you require to turn a little hatchback into an SUV. Hmm. Also, this car, front wheel drive only, there's no all wheel drive option available. How SUV is that, eh? ST line models get sport suspension. It's not any lower than the standard setup, it's just stiffer. The car gets a bunch of different driving modes. There's slippery for when it's icy outside, there is trail which alters the stability and traction control system to provide a bit of extra grip also changes the look of the dolls as well to look trail like and of course there is normal there's eco there is sport as well oh yes and that changes the dolls to a red color and also sharpens up the throttle response and adds a bit of weight to the steering lovely eh however not everything about this Ford puma is good here's five annoying things about it and like with a Volkswagen T-Cross, there's no ski hatch. Another reason why it's not like a proper SUV. You can really tell that this car is basically a Ford Fiesta. They've just added slightly chunkier body panels to because this part is the Ford Fiesta. But in order to make this raised bonnet fit it, they've had to stick on this extra bit so the little catch will fit into the retainer. Ha! The rear windows, don't go all the way down. In fact, they stick up quite a lot when you put them down. It's rubbish. You can't actually turn off the lane departure warning. Look, you can actually alter the intensity of it, so how much and how loud it bongs, but you can never stop it entirely. Now, if I wanted to have a motoring journalist cliche in this video, I'd complain about the fact that the Puma badge, it was on a cool little coupe car, not an SUV, but I'm not going to do that because it's boring and no one who buys one of these cars gives a toss about that at all. Something that would bother you a bit more is the fact that while this car, when you shut the door, oh yeah, it feels solid with the front door, really nice and reassuring. If you actually open and close the back door, listen to that noise. Sounds dead flimsy and it sort of betrays the fact that yes, after all, this is still just a Ford. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The doors aren't all bad, look at this. They do completely cover the sills. So when you get in and out, the sills are clean. So if you brush your legs on them, it doesn't matter, your trousers won't get dirty. In fact, this is one way the Puma is like a proper SUV. I really love the way you've got a picture of a Puma on the digital dolls. It's just kind of cool. Even though this car has a lot more bodywork over the Fiesta on which it's based, it only weighs 60 kilograms more, which interestingly is about the same weight as a Puma. You know, the wild Puma, the actual cat. There are three settings for the auto function of the climate control, which is really good because in most cars, if the temperature difference is too great, you suddenly get the fan going and blowing like crazy. Whereas this, it doesn't have to because you can temper it down a bit. Great idea. Annoyingly, you don't get a spare wheel with the Puma, but to make up for that, they give you something called the Mega Box, which is a big storage area in the car's boot floor. And you can use it for all sorts of different things, such as filling with wet cycling gear or, I don't know, scuba equipment, whatever you want to. But I figured out that you can actually fill it with water and use it as a nice foot spa. Oh, that's lovely, that isn't relaxing. All I need now is somebody to, can you come on, wash my feet? Come on, come on, it's good having staff. That's right, 
get in there and oh watch out for the verrucas oh lovely oh i'm such a diva me all right let's see what this ford puma is like to drive in town so at lower speeds the steering is nice and light the gear shifts a bit notchy but it's fine the clutch and brakes they're easy to use the brakes themselves are pretty strong but they're not grabby which is good great when you're just pottering around town if you need to suddenly make a u-turn the tight turning circle means you've got no problems look at that it makes this car super maneuverable and if you need to get into a parking space it helps as well i like the optional reversing camera because it's got a good display and you get a whole screen on the infotainment system there so it's really good and if you press this button you can then get that 180 degree wide view effect to help you out even more one thing that does bother me a bit about the car though is the fact that you don't really sit up that high i don't feel like i'm in any sort of suv like what this car's supposed to be competing against it's just like another hatchback really and then there's the suspension so it feels a bit on the firm side i mean this is the st line so it's a little bit worse than it would normally be but it's as though Ford has set it up to be more sporty than like relaxing in the way that you'd expect a small SUV to be. As a result, you feel bumps a bit more in this car than you would in, say, something like a Peugeot 2008. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. When you get out on the motorway, the, the Puma's fine for this sort of thing. It's not the quietest car, but then you don't expect it at this kind of price point. It's acceptable, and you wouldn't really hate having to do long distances in it, and it doesn't feel out of its depth at speed. The engine in this one at the 155 horsepower has enough pickups. So I'm in fourth gear, that was 50 miles an hour. I'm gonna see how long it takes to get to 70. And here we go up there. Did it? It is punchy. Economy-wise, this one's doing almost 42 miles per gallon, which isn't terrible, but it's not amazing either. Kind of sums up this car, really, on the motorway. It's acceptable. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Ford Puma? Should you uh, avoid it? <laughs> should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Ford Puma. It's fun to drive, and I personally like the look of it, but if you're after that, small SUV-like experience. It's just not quite SUV-ish enough. I didn't understand that. Please save a line number, for example, line one, or make your selection from the screen. If none of the items are correct, say none of those. You can also say help.